Uh, so my first question for you, as someone who has studied, you know, the way things work and the patterns of human behaviour, how predictable were the events of this past year between COVID and Donald Trump? Well, OK, quite predictable. So, uh, in fact, actually, it, both were predicted. So uh, we did a programme a couple of years ago, 2018, yeah. where we looked at what would happen if a flu-like pandemic came to the UK and spread through the country. And lo and behold, two years later, uh, here it was. So yeah. not just predictable, I think, but inevitable. Right. And you Donald Trump? You claim credit that you did it. Uh, <laughs> I'd love to have that much power. <laughs> so in Those bats from Wuhan copped a lot of flack. <laughs> <you're actually. laughs> Lots of people were claiming it, though. Lots of people were predicting it. It wasn't just, it wasn't just us. Oh, yeah. So, like, did you, like, buy shares in Zoom and Pfizer? <laughs> I wish I had that kind of foresight <laughs> next time. And what about, what about um, I mean, the actions of Donald Trump? Were they predicted? Yeah, I mean, I think, again, uh, that is something that escalated very slowly over the course of four years, right? Yeah. Um, but uh, I think, you know, there were people who were saying that he was sort of, you know, a, a, a crazy narcissist well in advance. I think Hillary really was sort of screaming it from, from the mountains. And I think, um, you know, again, right, inevitable rather than predictable. Well, yeah, she said if he'd lost the 2016 election, he would have said it was rigged. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, because he'd previously, uh, you know, he'd uh, lost an Emmy and he claimed yes. that was rigged. Yes. He had uh, Trump University have been sued. He claimed that the judges were rigged. There was, like, a primary and he claimed that was rigged. It's like a pattern. I it's think. his thing. So how does the rest of this year look, do you think, like, COVID-wise? Yeah. So I think that we've probably got a rough few months ahead. Yeah. But I think that once the weather starts turning, I think things are generally going to get a bit better. Yeah. And I think this time next year you know, we can start to, to look forward to things going back to normal. This time next year? I mean, like, properly normal, though. Pro I right. mean, like, getting to go to the pub and, like, go to music gigs and things. OK. Now, oh. I know we've all got questions, so, Josh, I'm going to go to you first. So, when we go to our post-COVID world, mm. how different do we think that's going to be from the world we lived in in 2018? OK, so there's precedent for this, right, because, of course, Spanish flu happened in 1918. And I think the thing that we've really learned during this pandemic is that people just really like doing stuff where we squish ourselves in close to other people. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Spanish flu, I mean, it's the same as this, right? Streets were deserted, cities were empty, people wearing masks. And then in the 1920s, after that, they spent an entire decade building as many buildings as they can to squish people in, right? So, like, cinemas and concert halls and stadiums and, like, dance venues. Like, the Roaring Twenties was really about just being near people, and I think that we, we could probably expect that again. Yeah. Um, Sue, you have a, a question? Will this... Will we understand the meaning of coffee this year? <laughs> <laughs> I think some things will remain out of our reach forever. <laughs> <laughs> Monia? Yeah, once... Once, you know, the pandemic's over, how many times, roughly, will Matt Hancock say he's glad it's over? <laughs> <laughs> you know, my, my real question is, how, you know, statistically, how quickly will people stop wearing masks mm. once we're told we're allowed to? Ah, oh, that's yeah. a great question. OK, I actually think that the mask thing is probably going to be an enduring legacy of, uh, of the pandemic. I mean, if you look at places, um, particularly in Asia, which were really badly hit by SARS and MERS, actually, mask wearing is really commonplace. And I think that once people start to see it as, like, a kind of politeness, you know, if you have a cough, or a bit of a cold and you wear a mask to be polite to other people, I think that will inevitably start seeping through. So I think, I, personally, I think masks are probably here to stay. Wow. wow. Not to the same degree that we have them now, obviously, yeah. and not in the sort of mandatory way that we have now, but I think we'll see masks linger. OK. Rose? Uh, hi, I'm Rose, 28, from New Zealand. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I would like to ask, um, what is dating like in the future and also in general? Okay. Now, I don't do it. Uh, <laughs> but what would it be like? Like, are people are going to get back to... Because like, people are doing weird things, like, over Zoom and stuff. Is it going to be a weird yeah. thing to kind of be that intimate or social with people? OK, I think all I'm going to say is that there is a reason why the peak in syphilis cases came in the 1920s after the Spanish... <laughs> 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 Yeah, that's what we're going for, right? <laughs> <laughs> Set that list! Set that list! <laughs> Josh, you've got another question, right? Yeah. What... So, obviously, we have this image of the future, like this is what's behind you, but what kind of technologies <laughs> do you think, in the next 20 years, we're going to kind of live through? OK, there's some seriously cool stuff coming. OK. So, right, the, the, the next thing, I think, is going to be something called the Internet of Touch, which sounds quite sexy, 
Yeah. And for the most part, it is. Right. It always has an excellent, <laughs> excellent, excellent um, application. Okay, so basically, somebody invented a glove, right, that you can put on the hand of someone who's had an injury, and their physiotherapist can wear it, right, and do loads of exercises, and then you can put it on your hand, and it does your exercises for you. And then somebody else realised, hang on a second, take that glove, put it on the hands of a, a professional pianist. What? Right? Didn't, not, didn't well, think it plays you were for you. Play and then yeah. you put it on the hands of someone who can't play the piano like me, and then you just sit at home and, like, just, you know, wow, bang out wow. Billy Joel, right? Which I imagine Whoa. would be everyone's top priority. <laughs> I look like the Billy Joel was the thing you <laughs> Sure. But, OK, now the imagine. The future is Billy Joel. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, think, I think that's the big conclusion here, yeah. So it's like a creepy horror hand. Yeah. So, so say it's used for, I don't know, coal mining, then does the next person that puts the hand on automatically have <laughs> that action? Well, so you can download anything you like, right? So, for example... Whoa. Um, let's imagine that you, uh, your car breaks down and you're like, OK, I need to, to fix my car. Go in the cupboard, get out your internet glove, pop it on, call up a mechanic anywhere in the world and they can, like, fix it for you. But, but then imagine, like, heart surgeons being able to teach people in different countries how wow. to do things. And well, can you contract syphilis from the... <laughs> <laughs> I am sure that that is going to be a problem. It will probably yes, be. Yes, I think, That's I think amazing. probably. What I, might, I might get involved wrong? and do my own, but just offer it, like, at a quarter price. <laughs> 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 well, here's a question. Will prosthetics get better? Yeah, so there, I think there's some really good stuff on the horizon with prosthetics, too. Yeah. So there's two big things. Um, one is something called exoskeletons, which is basically like imagine Wallace and Gromit's the wrong trousers, right? And that's pretty, you're pretty much there. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, uh, just sort of about strengthening outside of the body. But then I think that um, there's lots of stuff in something called embodied AI, which is about making prosthetics move more naturally. So rather than like programming them and saying, right, this is how the ankle should work or this is how like, you know, the elbow should work. It's about putting AI in them so that these objects learn how to, to behave themselves. Right. What? Right. Alex? Uh, just be, turn around, just be, and I'll tell you what, this foot's got a laugh, but it's got mind of its own, hasn't <laughs> it? Yeah. Um, yeah, just another big question I kind of always... The flying cars. Yeah. Is, is that going to... Are we going to be seeing... <laughs> seeing <laughs> That's that? an important I mean, question. We've got it's, the robot hand, haven't we? <laughs> it sort of already exists, right? So they, they're, like, they call them passenger drones instead of flying cars. Yeah. So the early ones, though, the only thing about them is the battery in them only lasts for 23 minutes. <laughs> so what? you can, like, fly you to Tesco's, but you've got to get the bus home, basically. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to fly to Tesco's. <laughs> just, we... just one final question. Yeah. Um, just statistically, where, where do you think the Arsenal are going to finish this season? <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid I just don't have those sort of powers. <laughs> <laughs>